As you may or may not know, on the 5th of February, the House of Commons, part of the UK Parliament, voted in favour of legalising same-sex marriage. This is not the end of the process. There are still a number of stages through which the same-sex marriage bill needs to progress before it can become an act, before it can become a law in this country. But as I'm aware, as I understand it, that was basically its biggest hurdle and it cleared it. I watched some of the debate in the House of Commons that preceded the vote on the same-sex marriage bill uh, with a certain degree of disbelief. I always knew that there were going to be people that would oppose this bill. I don't know why, but I guess I just did not expect some of the arguments put forward in this debate to be quite so bad. The kind of arguments that are really, you know, child's play to a few. Logically just stupid. So I'm going to go through and give you three of my biggest problems with some things that some MPs said in the same-sex marriage bill debate. Number one, I refer you to Sir Gerald Howarth, MP, who said the following. As the Honourable Member for Hayward and Middleton uh, uh, pointed out, nothing like this has been proposed in Parliament ever before. This is a massive change. One of the reasons he argues against the bill is that this is a massive change and nothing like this has ever been proposed before in the House of Commons. This was in response to a lot of people saying, well, marriage has evolved over time. It's never been one separate thing, which is, um, it's uh, true. That's a true thing to say. The response is essentially, we can't change marriage because we've never changed marriage before. We can't change the law because it's never been changed. The really, really simplified, decanted version of this argument is, we can't change the law because we can't change the law. Idiocy. Why would, why would someone say that? Beats me, Gerald. Dumbass. Number two, the second thing that annoyed me about this debate can be found in the speech by Robert Flello. Towards the end of his speech, he said the following. So, Mr. Speaker, marriage is the union of a man and a woman open to the creation of care and children, not in all cases, but fundamentally, that is the intrinsic value of it. Let me repeat that. Marriage is the union of a man and a woman for the creation and care of children, not in all cases, but fundamentally, that is the intrinsic value of it. So hang on, let me get this straight. The intrinsic value of marriage is that it's between a man and a woman for the creation and care of children. However, there are exceptions to this fundamental intrinsic definition that we accept for straight people, but not for gay people. Essentially, marriage is for the creation and care of children, except when it isn't. Got ya, Flello. Cock. The third thing that annoyed me about this debate was less a particular argument that was repeated again and again by the opponents of this bill, but more of a theme that permeated through a lot of what the opponents to this bill were saying. A lot of the people who were opposing this bill stood up and complained that they were being characterised as homophobic and bigoted while saying homophobic and bigoted things. I direct your attention to John Glenn. I am very disappointed to have to rise to oppose this bill this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. I never imagined that I would be put in a position where I have, by virtue of standing up for marriage, been characterised variously as a homophobic yeah, yeah, yeah. bigot, yeah, yeah, yeah. as a religious yeah. nutter, yeah, yeah, yeah. as a product of the dark ages, yeah, yeah. or I see this weekend in uh, the press on the brink of making a tragic mistake which I will have many years to regret. Oh, you're upset that you've been characterised as a homophobe. Well, what is it that's making people think that you're a homophobe? Marriage is about love and commitment, but marriage is also about complementarity, both biologically and as a mother and father of a man and a woman, with an inherent probability of procreation and raising children within that institution. Oh, that's it. The fact that you're saying that marriage is based on the complementarity of men and women. But what exactly do you mean by complementarity? To my mind, there are two understandings of this. Men and women are complementary because they can procreate, which is true. But hang on, if that's why... If that's why marriage exists, then surely there'd be some kind of provision or establishment regarding children in at least one of the laws regarding marriage in our country. Oh no, wait, that's not the case because that's, that's fucking stupid. The fact remains, you do not have to have children in order to get married. You can't say that that is the sole reason, significantly the discriminating reason, that makes it unsuitable for gay couples when it is entirely unnecessary to have children to get married. This is all aside from the fact that, you know, gay couples can have children, but you know, <laughs> whatever. The only other understanding of the complementary nature of men and women that I can see is with regards to men and women's relationships with each other. In other words, saying that the complementary nature of men and women makes their relationship when they pair together of greater worth and of more value 
than the love shared between two men and two women, which is very homophobic. So it really galls me that this dickhead, John Glenn, is sat there offended that people would dare refer to him as being homophobic or bigoted when he's saying and doing homophobic and bigoted things. I refer you to an article from Pink News entitled Will the media stop the pity for homophobes? I like this particular section. Since the Coalition for Marriage launched its campaign against equality, clerics have lined up to compare equal rights to legalising slavery and the rise of Nazism. Tory MPs have said it made them want to throw up. Pundits reasoned that gay relationships were of no use to society because there is no potential to produce children, and pollsters claimed it would bring down the government. And not mentioned in this article, because it happened very recently, like within the last two or three days, the Secretary of State for Wales, David Jones, said this on a Welsh TV show. I regard marriage as an institution that has developed over many centuries, essentially for the provision of a warm and safe environment for the upbringing of children, which is clearly something that two same-sex partners can't do. He is currently in David Cameron's cabinet. He is one of the top politicians in our country. And people like John Glenn have the nerve to act all offended and to act like they're the ones being oppressed. Fuck you, John Glenn. How dare you act like you are the one being oppressed, like you're the one being insulted, when people are just calling bigots out on their bigotry. You know, accurately labeling homophobes as homophobic. Let me be clear about something. During the debate, the Member of Parliament for Tottenham, David Lammy, said this. Let me speak frankly. Separate but equal is a fraud. Separate but equal is the language that tried to push Rosa Parks to the back of the bus. Separate but equal is the motif that determined that black and white could not possibly drink from the same water fountain, eat at the same table, or use the same toilets. Separate but equal are the words that justified sending black children to different schools from their white peers, schools that would fail them and condemn them to a life of poverty. It is an excerpt from the phrasebook of the segregationists and the racists. You can claim that gay people have the same rights as straight people in the form of civil partnerships. You'd be wrong when you say that because, as I've said before, it is absolutely a right to be able to call your spouse your husband or wife rather than your civil partner. But I'll tell you this right now, gay people and straight people will never be equal as long as they are regarded as separate in law. The implication of saying that only straight people should be allowed to get married is that straight couples are superior. The love shared by a man and a woman is superior to the love shared by two men or two women. That is what you are saying. And as long as that is the case, a climate of homophobia and bigotry will persist. It will foster and it will justify homophobic language homophobic abuse, homophobic bullying of gay students, as well as hate crimes in the form of harassment, assaults, and murders. How dare anyone stand up there in the Houses of the Parliament and act all offended that they're being called out for what they are. I don't know if any MPs will ever watch this video, but just in case any do, if you voted against this bill based on some bullshit reason like the complementarity of men and women, or the purpose of marriage being for the creation and care of children, you are a homophobe. You are a bigot. If you don't want to be referred to as a homophobe or a bigot, stop being a homophobic bigot. Ta-ta.